we have to realize here, he told her, your faith has saved thee. Well, he hadn't died yet. His blood had been offered up. But now notice her pain. Now notice her sins, he said, were forgiven. But the pain was in her mind and her soul. Why? Because sin causes you, uh, your soul, to be distracted and be hurt. So her tears were coming out of there. Her tears weren't coming necessarily out of her spirit. It was coming out of her soul. But he said, your faith has saved thee. And he said, go in peace. Now notice, peace is a spiritual force. It's a fruit of the spirit that we read in Galatians chapter 5. But that peace also has to permeate through the soul. You can have peace in the soul, but if you're or peace in your spirit, but if you don't have peace in your soul, then the peace in your spirit won't do you much good. I mean, it might, you know, you, you might get through the problem, but who wants to come to the problem in worse physical shape? Because if your soul doesn't have peace, your body will start to fall apart before too long. And you, you don't even have, you can't even really blame the devil on that. That's because the Bible is very clear. I will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon me. So if you want peace, the way to do it is to keep your mind stayed upon God. If you keep your mind upon him, you will have peace. If you don't have peace, they say that up to 80% of all sickness and disease right now here in America, and I would assume in other places too, is primarily caused because of stress. Okay, stress is the absence of peace. Jesus came and he actually said, he said, I, I, I leave you with my love. He said, I'm giving you my love. I've shown you my love and I'm showing you how to walk in my love. He said, but peace, I leave you, my peace, not the peace that the world has, but the peace that I give you. And so there is a peace, as we know, that passes understanding. It goes beyond, you think, I don't know why I'm so peaceful. I should be upset. I should be in stress but I'm not. And when you're not and other people are, everybody looks at you like you're crazy. They think, well, you just obviously don't know the situation. If you knew the situation, you'd be in stress. No, I know the situation. I just know God better. And I know God is for me. Amen? And you can have peace in everything. And whenever you have true peace and you walk in peace on a consistent basis, I'm not talking about visiting peace every Sunday. I'm talking about walking in peace consistently. When you do that, your body will automatically start to heal itself because the stress, the, the disruptor in your body is removed, no matter what the devil's trying to do. I mean, you can have a tumor. You can go get it tested, and they'll say it's cancer. And then you can go to God and say, you know what? I know you are my peace. I know that you are my healer. And therefore, I trust you, and by his stripes, I'm healed. And then you can get into peace, and guess what? Then you will go back to the doctor, if you go to a doctor, and you'll go back to them, and they will look at that tumor and say, that's a strange thing. The tumor's still there, but there's no cancer. Why? And then you say, well, why isn't the tumor gone? Give it time. He killed the thing that was killing you first. And then the cancer, then the tumor will disappear. Does that make sense? But you have to realize that many times, just by the, when you, you're not in peace, your mind is running, but it's running in a, in a negative track. And because of that, see, every thought you have, and you can prove this by science, <clears throat> but every thought you have has a frequency attached to it. And it, when you're in a frequency, because of the mindset that you're in and the thoughts that you're having, there are certain frequencies that whenever you are thinking those thoughts, it is tearing your body apart. Just by you thinking those thoughts, those frequencies tear your body apart. And whenever you start thinking correctly, this is why one of the reasons why Paul said that we are to take all our thoughts captive unto Christ. That when you take every thought captive, now that means that you make it, number one, you stop it from doing what it wants to do and you change it and make it do what you want it to do. So you can take a negative thought, you can stop that thing, cap captivate it, and then you can turn it around and start speaking and thinking the truth. And when you start thinking the truth, the truth has a different frequency than death, than sickness, those thoughts. 
And the truth, not only does that stop the sickness, but now it actually starts to heal your body. That's why it's so important. That's why you see, you can see people that are not born again. I mean, just, you know, just live in any, pretty much any way uh, that the world would live. And yet they don't get sick. Why? And you talk to them and you'll find they're the most positive people you'd be around. Why? Just because God put that into us from a natural point of view, we might say, that our bodies will automatically do that. And so you, it, your faith can heal you, meaning your faith toward God. And notice, he, Jesus told this woman, he said, your faith has saved you. Isn't that right? Your faith. But so far, we hadn't seen any faith come from her. Isn't that right? We haven't really seen any faith. So what was she showing? Love. Jesus said, here's what she did to me. She took care of me. She loved me. She, she adored me. And because of that, why? Because faith, which works by love. So as she was loving, that was counted as faith toward Jesus. And he said, your faith in coming to me and doing these things 